okay, the topic today is something that I think about all the time. It's like, what is the one thing that can get in your way? It's alcohol for success. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the one thing that if you are, if you have an unhealthy relationship with it, if you have no handle on it, it's the one thing that can completely derail you because it, it derails your focus, your drive, your health starts to slip. It's like the, the pod today is we're going to, we're going to look at alcohol in business. We're going to look at alcohol in relationships. We're going to pick apart networking. We're going to kind of go through all the different aspects, how, how alcohol, Hey, maybe there's some positives. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a, there's a few positives, yeah. but there's a lot more, more negatives yeah. is exactly, you know, spoiler, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, everybody. If you don't have a lot of money and you want a lot of money and you're drinking, you should probably stop drinking until you get a lot of money. I don't want to see a bunch of drunk people out there who are like, you know, I want to make a lot of money. I want to start my business. I want to get my health and shit. It's like, well, then stop drinking. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest thing you can do. And it's what's it's the opposite of expensive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it literally puts money back into your pocket. So Andrew's produced some questions here, rapid fire style, where we look at different aspects of alcohol and I'm going to give my personal take, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. surprise, surprise guys. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not even a doctor of journalism. I'm not even a, a doctor of poetry. I'm a, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, applied economics and management, uh, Cornell university, go big red. Wouldn't be a <laughs> podcast unless I gave a little shout out there, but the bottom line is we want to look at alcohol from all these different angles. Sometimes he hits me out of left field and I got to scramble. Well, actually, the first question I want to start with just popped up in my mind. It's actually on this list. Off menu. It's off menu. How did you, like, manage alcohol when you were in college? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously you're successful now, but back then, like, when you're building yourself and you were in a fraternity too, mm -hmm. how did you level that out? Okay, so I walked you know, graduated. I graduated everybody. You know, <laughs> come on. Where's my, where's my kudos? I graduated. And when they handed me my diploma, they said cum laude. Okay. So what that means is with honors in Latin for mm -hmm. all the folks who didn't take Latin out there. Right. And everybody, including myself, stood up, my friends from the fraternity, the people that were either younger or forgot to you know, attend their graduation ceremony in their respective college, burst into laughter. Everyone started to laugh. And I just remember my mom being like, why is everyone laughing? Why is everyone laughing? Like she was horrified because nobody ever saw me study. Ever. Really? Because I would study in private. And if the paper got assigned, I would do it that night. So even in college, I had this compartmentalized way of working. And I'll describe it for you, right? It's if I have something to do, that comes before the party. But I'm a strategic partier. What that means is I'm going to get all my work done so I can enjoy the weekend. Mm -hmm. That is what worked for me in college. Stacked all my work. The, the project gets assigned on Thursday. It's done on Monday. You know what I mean? Or the project gets assigned on Monday. It's done on Friday so I can enjoy the weekend. Okay? Yeah. That was my strategy. No one saw me open a book. I wasn't much of a making a big deal about me studying. I was I, yeah, would hide in my room as opposed, oh, I'm so busy. I'm going to the library. That wasn't me. I'm like, I'm going to be over here in peace in mm -hmm. my little cubicle <laughs> of a room. Yeah. And I compartmentalized that area. It's no surprise, guys. I was a social chair in my fraternity. I was not someone who wasn't going out. I, I was super social, super party. And, for, and in that, at that point in my life, it worked for me, that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. Going out every weekend, you know, you're younger, your body can withstand, yeah. you know, Kraft mac and cheese and, uh, you <laughs> ramen know, noodles and ramen noodles and, uh, you know, um, Milwaukee's best <laughs> for a diet. Yeah. So um, in that sense, like in that itinerary you had in college, how different is that if you try to do that in the real world? <laughs> it's completely different. I do not behave that way anymore, okay? Number one... I get my work done. I compartmentalize. Okay. You do not touch my work schedule. I don't do the casual cocktail. 
I don't do the casual beer. You want me to come down and have a beer? You're going to have to make another friend. That's just not me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not interested in doing that. But now, there's so much less frequency of drinking. Okay, so I can walk you through, like, how I operate now. It's completely different. I operate now in sprints. So I'll go through, I'll, I'll do two months of straight, of straight working where I'm training, I'm getting great night's sleep, and I'm just become this turbo boosted freaking, you know, uh, operator because there's literally nothing dragging at me. And if it's punctuated by these times where I can take a break to drink or, you know, for me, I didn't drink over the holidays. I didn't mm-hmm. do the big Thanksgiving. I didn't do the Christmas. It's completely, completely dry. And then for New Year's Eve, I chose to go on a trip and have a, have a big blowout party, and that, that punctuated the end of my year. It was, it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. But in terms of drinking as a, something that's a, like in the course of my everyday, it's not. It's not. And my argument is the people that I know that are most successful, it's not either. So th- that's, my, that's my personal experience. I'm going to go to the, the grave on that. The people that have a, a healthy relationship with drinking, with with, with their social life, with that, that kind of angle, they have it under control. I don't know anyone who is hyper successful that's, that's going out and partying every single night. And by the way, this, some successful people, they've already achieved their success. They want to go out and spend 30 grand at the nightclub. Yeah. Dude, they already made their money. They want to be a, they want to be stupid. They can be <laughs> stupid, yeah. right? But if you're not there, you can't be stupid. You can't because that one little thing might be the thing that's holding you back. Mm-hmm. You're not going to wake up on Monday and wanting to like bite the fucking bull in the ass when you're tired, you're hungover, you know. Yeah, and then you're just like, oh, I can't. I don't want to do this today and whatever. Yeah, and if you don't do it today, when are you going to do it? Exactly. So there's a couple models here. There's the model of don't drink at all. Complete abstinence, right? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is a pretty freaking great model if you can cut it out completely. And then there's the model of the sprint where you can where you can work two, three months. I don't know why I've seen like I have a couple friends in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Swedish guys are like they're on that schedule. I don't I don't know why, but maybe just the Swedish people I know. (laughs) Um, And then there's the the folks that have that weekly drink, or I just personally. If you're having a nightly drink, you're doing this thing, what, what are the upsides to it? It's yeah. calorically a piece of shit. It's lowering your motivation. If you're a guy, it's, it's literally gr- taking your testosterone levels down. Yeah. What, like, what am, I, what am I missing here? Unless you're a sommelier, you know, unless you're, you live in France, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> right? Yeah. I and, mean, yeah, only 2% of my market is, is French, um, by the way. So <laughs> it's probably not you. <laughs> Wait, so how prominent is alcohol in like the business world and what you do and like how often are your friends drinking or are they even drinking? Right. This is a controversial take here because in the high level employee world, mm-hmm. I saw drinking rampantly on Wall Street. I, I, I see it in friends companies that are in sales, whatever. I see it just rampant. And I don't know if that's because people are like, hey, I don't know. I don't have the, I don't know what to do with my free time. It's, there's the pressure from the rest of your team that's pushing you out to drink and, and to like against your will. Like who the hell wants to go out and drink with their team on a Tuesday? Not me. I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, count me out. Call me a bad team player. I have absolutely no interest in that. Right. And, ba- and back in the day on Wall Street, like I would just like have to bow out on some of these things because everything was, was cir- circled around drinking. Now, in the entrepreneurship world, you just have so much more accountability. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just see a lot less drinking now, and I see a lot less, like, you know, now that I'm outside of the, the corporate world, I just, I just see a lot less drinking. Mm-hmm. Just a fact. Like, you can't perform. Is that just because our, and that's an entrepreneurial mindset thing, or is it because of a different reason. I don't I don't know. I it's it's probably a generalization, but if you're like someone that's building something, you can't have an off day. If you're part of a really large organization, like, you know, you're a partner at a big law firm whatever, like you can have an off day and get, and get away with it. It's not a great idea. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt your career, but if you're balancing the whole freaking world on your shoulders with this early stage startup where you you miss you you blow a client meeting that could be your entire quarter. 
Like you, you don't deliver like your elevator pitch the right way. You don't get funding. You're completely screwed, but all because you were out, you know, drinking. I think, I think when you're an entrepreneur, when you own so many different aspects of the business, if you're insane enough to want that to be your life, you internalize it and you're like, I'm not going to let anything screw this up. I'm going to be really strategic. Mm -hmm. Um, but the bottom line here is drinking is such a huge factor. The reason we're talking about drinking right now, guys, is it's January, right? So dry January, it's, a, I think, an absolutely brilliant reset. I don't know who invented it. The Americans, the British. And I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the British invented it. <laughs> um, you know, read between the lines there, guys. But the, the, the fact is taking that reset is like, yes. Thank you, society, for giving me an opportunity not to, you know, go out and drink a pint of Guinness on a Tuesday for no reason. Mm -hmm. I'll take that every day. So I think one of the best one of the best things like what did we get? We got Movember and then we got dry January. <laughs> we have I mean, one more that I'm not going to mention <laughs> in November. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not for this podcast. It's a business <laughs> podcast. But yeah, I mean, it's. It's one of these things that you have to have a paradigm and, and some control around it, or it is going to just eke away at mm -hmm. your productivity with very little upside. So I'm going to let you get back to the questions. Here. I got you. Has there ever been like a, a business decision you've made because of alcohol that has affected you in the past negatively or positively? Yeah. I mean, when I was young, when I was working on Wall Street, you know, it was common to go out on, on Thursday nights, even though you had to go to work at, on Friday morning, we used to call mm -hmm. it synthetic Fridays. That's what Thursdays were. And you'd go out, you'd stay up all night. And then what you do is you do this thing called a Xerox, which is where you don't sleep. You go home and you just change your shirt and go right back into, into the office. Now this is problematic for a couple of reasons. How are you like awake? You're, you're, you're kind of like, not really functional, but you're there, you're sitting there. And then of course you're managing hundreds of millions of dollars. That's the problem. Okay. So, you know, I found myself in that situation, you know, multiple times as a young idiotic kid, basically. And you just start to make stupid choices. You start to make careless errors. So, um, you know, one too many of those and you, you start to realize that you just can't really do it anymore. Here's the thing, right? It's like, if we think about life as these seasons the season of your 20s the seasons of your 30s the seasons of your tw the season of your 20s is like i'm going to make as many mistakes as possible i'm going to learn where the guardrails are here i'm going to learn my limits you know if you're someone like me and you didn't really understand how the real world worked until you were just kicked right into it on wall street or until you were faced with oh shit like this is pretty serious stuff <laughs> i guess i better pay attention you know you're going to make some of these bad mistakes but Man, I would have paid any amount of money to not go through that phase. Mm -hmm. See, anyone who's sitting around now who's in school and they're just like, yeah, I don't really drink. I just kind of like work on my pro. Like I'm, I'm like, you have it all right. Dr I think drinking is one of the mo the the most like pernicious things that like everyone is doing or pressuring you into do. If if you're a heavy drinker in your twenties, you might miss the writing on the wall, like you might just not experiment or explore enough in your career or whatever it is you want to go after. You just like might miss it because you're drinking. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh man, my twenties, that was crazy. I eh? they like, they want you that to be like the best time of your life. Yeah. Well, let me tell you the best time of your life is when you're successful and you're and you're following your passions and you're achieving your dreams. You're, you're sitting there and going, can I accomplish that? Yeah, I think I can. Let me make a plan. Boom. And you start to execute it. That's the best time of your your life, not at some shitty bar, you know, mm -hmm. on Friday night yeah. where you think you're having a good time. I mean, the cr the crazy thing is, is like there's all this like dopaminergic. It's like dopamine. It's like you're basically having like a fake win when you're drinking, okay? Because you start to get this rush of dopamine up to Friday, and like your reward is like drinking some beers or yeah. like it's this fake feeling of achievement that drinking can give you where you get locked into the cycle. I think the most dangerous thing in the entire world is the weekend drinker. I, I, I mean, that is the most dangerous thing because your life becomes chemi chemically and like in a ritualistic sense, all about getting bombed on Friday and Saturday. Dude, if that's your life, 
which is most people, that's fucking terrible. Your mm-hmm. whole life is built around, and now this is my reward. It's like, isn't your reward being happy? Isn't your reward building great relationships? Isn't your reward driving a fucking Ferrari? Like, not getting, you know, shit-faced and falling through a table, you know, right. or or punch it through a ceiling on, on a TikTok yeah. viral video. <laughs> That's not, you should not be a, that isn't your goal. Everyone should know, Andrew, how old How old are you, Andrew? Cause I'm, I'm 20 years old. 20 years old. And I, uh, my freshman year, I went to uh, Florida State, which is. We've heard about the things that happened there. That is probably a top 10 party school. And like you said, falling down or punching the wall breaking the the floor whatever that's like a normal thing there like that happens every day that's sunday afternoon at florida state (laughs) that's that's monday after class right right but how did you get out of that how did did you did or are you still in the are you still you know do you have a a home depot bill i don't know about (laughs) (laughs) but i realized this like for you guys, like, there's a lot of people that, like, my friends are, and they're all in fraternities, and they all do this still, and um, I realized, like, hey, I don't want to be like everyone else. I need to be different. If I want to be successful in my life, I have to <laughs> grab life by the throat and actually, like, right. do the things that you're talking about, and I just feel like a lot of people are scared to get outside of their comfort zone and do yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It would be different. Exactly, and it gets out of your comfort zone. You can't you just like don't like a lot of people don't like what other people have to say about them if they're doing something different. I mm-hmm. feel like and that's just how the world works nowadays. And you have to be strong in here to be able to do that. Right. But going on, uh, like, do you feel like in like a work event setting or like a, just like something uh, in business? Do you feel like it will impact your like professional reputation if you provide like alcohol at these settings as a business owner, or do you think it's better to be dry and more professional in a sense? Well, two ways to look at it, right? It's if you're putting on an event, right, which I'm guessing very few people who are watching this are putting on the event, more people are attending the event, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the the real question here is it, with if you're attending an event, a work event, a networking event, do you have to drink? Okay. My answer is, it seems like you do, but you definitely do not. Mm-hmm. You definitely do not. Because what happens is, is when you start drinking in a networking event, your attention shifts and it does it ever so slightly. In the beginning, you go, I'm here to meet some great people in network. I'm here to, I'm, I'm here to build out the people that I know and can, and can like grow the rest of my life around. Like these are the people that I'm going to, I'm going to, f- these are the people that I can trust. These are the people that I'm, I'm going to build a business with. You know, these are the people I'm going to learn from. Maybe I'm going to find a mentor in this room. All the good stuff. And what happens is this shift, you know. What's the shift? The shift is one cocktail, two <laughs> cocktails, three cocktails. Then it's like, well, now we're just getting drunk, everybody, right? Like, at that point, you stop caring about why you're there, and your attention shifts. Just to have a good time. Just to have a good time. But it's chemical. It's not even your, it's not even your fault. Your, your mind is basically like, wait, the rewards are over here at the bar the rewards aren't me meeting you know the partner over here Mm -hmm. you know the rewards are over here at the bar yeah and and that is is incredibly problematic that doesn't mean that you're one of these man everyone knows the people at the um the networking events it's like you know (laughs) nicholas crown damn glad to meet you you know and you're like okay dude like please stop yeah just calm down everybody just come that's not what i'm saying because, by the way, the dude, I'm glad to meet you. That guy's just, he's not being genuine. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. That's a put on. I'm not saying be Mr. Stiff, Mr. Clean, Mr. Per- whatever. It's just, if you're there to network, then network. Mm-hmm. It's, it's scary to network. It's scary to walk in that room. So you want a little crutch? Okay. Well, all of a sudden that networking event has turned into just a big old party. Dude. Let's not sh- sugarcoat it. It's like, that could end up in a good thing. You might end up having some kind of crazy party night with someone that you would love to meet or someone who, who's going to be part of your network. That happens. Not mm-hmm. saying that doesn't happen. I'd be f- full of shit if I said <laughs> that doesn't happen. It's happened many times. But throughout the course of my life, I've experimented with both things. And I know for a fact it's better to be completely aware, of, to be completely with it. Because then you know who you've met. Yeah. 
you know, like sometimes you wake up, you get the number, like who, wait, who is that again? And you're like, was, I don't even know if that was really a quality connection or if I was just m- making it seem like it was in mm-hmm. my head at the time, because everyone's your friend when you've been drinking. But <laughs> the, uh, and, and I talk about this when it comes to networking, network is networking, isn't getting a card or phone number. It's following up and then doing something with something with that person. That's real. Yeah. So it's like, Hey man, we were talking about paddle ball. Let's play, let's play paddle on Tuesday. Done. Okay. That's day one of the relationship. Day one of the relationship isn't you in yeah. some freaking venue talking, you know, sitting there with your, your white shirt and, you know, perfectly <laughs> dimpled tie. That's not a, that's not real. That's where you get to start to, okay. okay you see, you see where you, where you fit in the, in the grand scheme of the, the, the event and who you gravitate towards. But the real networking starts the second time where you end up just meeting a bunch of people that like to drink, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> which is a bad, yeah. you know, Exactly. It's a bad strategy. It, so you were at the uh, the sh- university club at Chicago mm-hmm. on uh, this past um, weekend, right? At New Year's, right? Yep. And you were at an event and you were guys were drinking as well. Mm-hmm. Did you make any quality uh, connections there or like relationships or did you just, it was just a good time to get like drunk or how, how did that go? The event at the university club was one of the most beautiful. So it, it takes place on New Year's Day. Oh. Okay, so it takes place on New Year's Day. It's a black tie event. It starts at 11 a.m. and it goes till 5 p.m. It's a day party or a darty yeah. is what I'm pretty sure those are called. <laughs> Been reading the comment section, everybody. Um, danger. A danger. Dangerous. Uh, yeah, a, a darty. Okay, so here's the problem. I had spent the entire weekend out because New Year's Eve, I celebrated New Year's Eve. I, I flew into Chicago. I was out Friday. I was at my, my favorite restaurant in Chicago. So things got, things got crazy. And let me tell you, I didn't enjoy the most beautiful event of the weekend because I was just totally worn out. I flew, I flew out of Chicago, like feeling like I could have done so much more with my weekend. You know, again, I planned this out. I planned this whole weekend out about celebrating and just closing my year out and just being like, Mm -hmm. you know, it, for, for me, you, you need to have these things planned out because I basically work for two months straight. And I'm like, all right, we're going to yeah, we're going to have a little champagne here uh, to celebrate the end of the year. But I, I would be full of shit if I told you that I didn't leave there going like I could have done so much more if I didn't drink. So I'm at this black tie event during the day with absolutely some of the coolest people in Chicago. Right. Um, and I'm not fully taking advantage of it. Is that because you're more focused on drinking rather than talking? No, I was focused on just surviving <laughs> at that point. To be, I mean, like I was just like focusing on acting normal and and surviving the event. But you know, I did some. I knew people at the event already, so mm-hmm. it, for me, it wasn't like a pure networking event. But yeah, I was just the whole time. I was just like, oh god. Like the the thing is, you walk in this party. There's a room for every different type of alcohol. There's a sake room with sushi. An amazing Japanese oh, food. Fire. There's a wine room, wine tasting room. There's a craft beer room with all the... Why sh- I should have saved <laughs> up for this. Like, this has been the whole... You know, this has been amazing. What was that? Like, on your story, you had, like, an ice sculpture? Like, where you... Oh, God. Like- <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that was what I referred to as the icy owl. That was a <laughs> owl vodka luge. You know, that's how I started the day off with one of those. Wow. And it hurt a lot. <laughs> it was really painful. But the thing is, like, let's separate. Let's let's separate these these celebrations, these <laughs> these from the habitual stuff that starts to eke away at your success. Like, you know me, dude. That I'm not doing that every single weekend because it would be impossible for me to operate on the level that I'm operating mm-hmm. doing that. So, I think we're trying to draw a distinction and obviously not be prescriptive. Build your own plan here and give you all the uh, all the perspective and my personal my personal insight, but yeah, that, that event is, that's a once a year kind of thing, you know, and some people that's their every week, that's their every weekend in my, in my twenties, maybe that was my every weekend. It is definitely not sustainable. Yeah. It's like going to live every weekend or 11, whatever. I feel like that compared to like a black tie event like that is a different playing field because you're going, one, you're just going just to like, you know, like the hookup culture, whatever. And the other one, you're actually like, okay, I'm in a room with high quality people. It's different. I feel. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to tell someone that they can go this place, they can't go this place. 
you go over go wherever you want like that's how I like to end my year you know I like to put on a nice suit a nice tux whatever feel like okay Mm -hmm. I'm an organized person. I'm a successful person. And then, and then end, close out that year. Are there probably more successful people in some of these environments than others? Yeah. I mean, the argument here is, again, it's like, if you want to make more money, if you are not sitting there going, I'm good. I can't, you know, pick up the phone right now and just at random help people fix all their problems yeah. with their business. But I can say, if you're drinking every single weekend and you're not loaded, if you're not just like, you know... <laughs> Yeah. completely crushing it yeah that's one thing that is guaranteed going to fix <laughs> like your energy your health like it's it's anyone who's not addressing this is is avoiding it so dry january guys here we are this is real it's and it's smart it, and it doesn't have to be january for me for me it was it was november mm -hmm. and december so in like that university club that, that you went to did it really like enhance or did it hinder like those relationships or did you even like think about it in that term? I think as much fun as my New Year's was, like I went to this great party at night, um, sh you know, champagne, the whole, everything, right? I think it just like I was, I was saying before, it becomes the focus instead of the sauce around it when it starts to become ex excessive, right? So mm -hmm. for me, you know, Friday, um, well, Friday night, I enjoyed a great dinner. Um, Saturday night was this big party. You know, you you meet the people in your near vicinity, but you, you, you start thinking less and less outside <laughs> of the box. Yeah. And the quality of those relationships, I'll let you be the judge on how deep they are and how authentic they are. So could I have done more that weekend having not drank? One, 100%. 100%. But I showed up there going like, hey, this is my time to to blow off steam, whatever. And and that's just how I approached it. But uh, I mean, I'm sitting here tell, telling you like, well, I probably could have done that a lot. I could have covered a lot more ground. I could have done a lot more activities during the day. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of fun, but it, it probably could have been just as fun. I got you. Maybe more fun. <laughs> I get, yeah, honestly, I don't think you need alcohol in every like situation to have fun. No, the amount of fun or the whatever is equally in proportion to how shitty you feel the next day. You know, mm. uh, you know, in my thirties, guys, like it only gets worse. <laughs> the hangovers only get worse. Like, so for me, it's you know, the more you indulge, the more you're going to pay for it the next day. I don't know. That's a trade that I don't think I really like to take so much. Yeah, you know, in I my life. You. How does um, the consumption of alcohol affect your leadership skills and abilities as a business owner like yourself? Because obviously, like, you don't do it as much, but in the case scenarios that you have, have has there any any has there ever been, like, a scenario where it's, like, affected, like, your thought process on what needs to be done, how to do it, and like that? Drinking is affecting your baseline energy and your baseline motivation. So it's, it's if you have a problem that can get achieved today or tomorrow, and you're tired and you're in that state, let's pretend it's month. You've got this, you know, Sunday scaries or it's Monday, whatever it is. Like you, you're gonna just kick that can down the road. And I, I can I witness it in myself, and I witness it in other people that I that I work with. Right? Like one of the most important things for me when I'm hiring somebody, even if I'm working with like a contractor is to know that their whole life isn't about alcohol, because if it is, I know I'm getting substandard, you know, help, teamwork, leadership, thought, you know, insight on Mondays and maybe Tuesdays if they're out of their minds. Like, yeah. it's like, I don't want to work with somebody like that. So if, if I don't want to work with somebody like that, why would I want to be one of those people myself? Exactly. Or why would I want to hang around people like that? Mm hmm. It could create like a toxic work culture then like within For your sure. yeah, and like what would happen just like you, the employees would just be more absent or just like it would be more like argumentative how would it work in that sense or it could just be all the above i mean it's no secret that wall street there's a lot of alcohol and drugs i don't know why that is there's a lot of money there's a lot of young personalities there's a lot of hot tempered personalities there's a lot of competition you know I don't, I don't know the core reason there, but I know that communication can break down pretty fast if someone's c cranky. Mm -hmm. I know that poor decision-making can escalate. I know poor de decision-making as a group could escalate. So it's, 
it's unfortunately a, a, a pretty huge part of certain businesses and certain cultures to go out. It's like, okay, we've got a bond. We got to go, you know, someone's got to fall asleep in a bush tonight. You know, someone's got to fall asleep on a park bench. You know, Jeez. you walk by and you see your boss in a hedge. You're <laughs> like, yeah, that's, we, t- we bonded. We bonded. Yeah, all right. We bonded, right. <laughs> um, but do you not think like in certain case scenarios, it could create like a more relaxed atmosphere where we're all not, or like in your case, or like whatever in Wall Street, not everyone's like scrambling. It could be more like, okay, take a deep breath, right, and then like that. So there's there's studies that have been done about creativity and alcohol, and what happens is after one beer, they tested they they were running the study on developers, software developers, and after one beer, their creativity increased. Oh. So their ability to solve problems and think more abstractly increased. So they could actually start to solve these coding challenges a, a lot faster. Now, here's what happened. They gave him another one. They gave him another one. Oh. And it just goes downhill from so there. it's like a little spike and then... It's a little spike. And let's just say that little spike is, hey, you know what? We usually sit across the, the hall from each other at work. It's a little awkward to, you know, meet, you know, maybe that one drink opens up some creativity, opens up some commonality. Exactly. And then after that, uh, it's diminishing returns. So you tell me about how many work events involve one beer and then they pull the alcohol away and say, okay, <laughs> that was the one beer. Yeah, I don't think anyone no. would want to do that. No. <laughs> I mean, congratulations. <laughs> you had your one beer. You've been, <laughs> you've been optimized to, for creativity and that, yeah, right. Um, do you think like in like uh, like work events or like being as the business owner, maybe uh, like in a, a meeting or whatever, it's like a, a way to reward or recognize uh, your employees for their hard work and excellence? Or is that just bullshit? Like if you're running a huge organization, you have tons of brain power at your disposal. You have to understand the addictive properties and the dopamine dopaminergic properties <laughs> of alcohol. So you're like. Give alcohol during events. Events are fun. People like events. People like work. It doesn't take that. You're not making this huge fucking leap to mm-hmm. create that that line of that line of reasoning. So hey, we have an event. Here's free alcohol. You have alcohol. You have fun. You think work is fun. Mm-hmm. This is the the beer cart. You know the beer cart, the Silicon Valley beer cart, the New York City um, Madison Avenue advertising beer cart. Whatever. Listen, the beer cart is getting you to stay at work longer. That's what a beer cart is. It's like, hey, it's Friday night. You could have friends. <laughs> you could have a life. Here's the beer cart. Think about it. Yeah. It's it sounds so innocent. And it, it maybe it is innocent. Maybe I'm just, you know, mm-hmm. a crotchety old whatever. <laughs> but but rolling the beer cart out on Fridays keeps people at work longer. Mm-hmm. I get it. It, it. it improves this this momentary connectivity between the teams in this creative way. And then it's just then it goes too far, right? Yeah. And then how many of these things that we read, these horrible things that we read about in the workplace, how many of these things involve alcohol? You know, I feel like we're going through this podcast and everyone's like, Nick is anti-alcohol. <laughs> I'm, not anti, I'm not anti-alcohol. I'm not anti-anything. I'm just anti-things that start to fuck up your yeah. progress and are misused and sometimes have a place in the work environment, but rarely... Like, rarely does it go according to plan for the individual. I think rolling out the beer cart is great for the company. Mm-hmm. It's shitty for you. <laughs> you know, hey, Johnny <laughs> sticks around a couple extra hours, meets, you know, uh, Bobby over here in um, sales, and yeah. it cost us $3. Pretty sweet, right? You know, uh, oh, and then they start hanging out on the weekends. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, now Bobby and Bobby only hangs out with people from Acme Co. That's pretty cool. His whole life revolves around this place. That beer cart was a good strategy. Whoever thought of that? Uh, do you think it like, like attracts and retains like top talent individuals that would uh, go under you as a business owner? It's a cheap perk. It's like, what did they say in the Roman Empire? It's uh, bread and circuses. It's like food, free food, and uh, entertainment. And okay. you'll shut up and you'll do what you're supposed to do. And you'll stay where you are. So you can't tell me that the Friday beer cart, the, uh, the Friday event, all this stuff isn't just bread and circuses for, for, the, for the people that are, you mm-hmm. know. Listen, if you're running a business, if you're a leader, okay, I know there's everyone's got their, there's some sketchy boss out there who's, you know. If you notice who's drinking, guys, it's never the leaders. It's you, 
right? It's the person sitting and doing the frontline work. You think the leaders are sitting there, you know, drinking as much free beer as possible and as much free wine as possible? No. Yeah. Number one, they can go home and they can go buy their own wine and drink it with their friends and family. Exactly. Notice who's keeping a distance at corporate events. It's the le- it's it's the leaders, the leadership. Look, this isn't some dark, evil conspiracy <laughs> structure of the corporate world. It's just be aware of these things. And when you're aware of them, you start to make better decisions. So it's like, I'm aware that this is happening. I'm aware that it, I don't need to just think that this is how things have to be. And in, in, in my opinion, you start to create a little bit of distance. You start to make better decisions. You kick it at the work event just a little bit less. And you wake up in the morning, feel fresh. And you're the only guy who's performing the next day after the, you yeah. know, the third floor mixer or whatever. Yeah. And you're just 10 steps ahead. and You're just 10 steps ahead because whoever's running that business do they want the guy that's falling asleep at his desk the next day? You want the guy that's just like, hey, morning, boss. Yeah, woke up, hit the gym pretty early, and uh, I figured I'd come in a little bit early because, you know, I just woke up feeling fresh and just wanted to work on some stuff. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I know who's going to absolutely crush it this quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, the guy that did that, not the guy that's like, whoo, that was crazy. You know, I feel <laughs> pretty crappy, boss. Like, can I take the rest of the day off? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, and I've been both of those people in my life, by the way. So I'm not hating on yeah. anybody here. Do you think like, or in your experience, has it strengthened professional relationships or no? I think I've, in an immature way, been able to make some more friends early in my career through drinking. Definitely. You know, but now the worst thing you can DM me is let's get a beer. Let's get a cocktail. It's the worst thing. Well, you could probably think of something worse, guys. I've seen some. <laughs> I've seen worse stuff. Yeah, the the. I don't want to get a beer with you. Not because I think you're a jerk or or you're not smart or you have no. I don't. I don't need to do that. Like, I'm good, right? So, or hey, I'll buy you a beer. I'll buy you a cocktail. No thanks. I'm not gonna buy myself a cocktail on the Tuesday that you want to hang out when you're in town. Not because I'm a jerk. Because that's how my life is structured. Do you have something that you want to work on? Well, tell me what it is. Then, Don't force me into yeah. this I- stupid social atmosphere. Here's the thing. If you want to influence someone to do something, get them drunk. Film with food, okay? Because what you're doing is you're playing chemically with their dopamine. You're like, good food, good drinks. Now, what do you think about my sales? You know, what do you think about my sales pitch? Sounds a lot better than when my stomach was empty, <laughs> right? So I'm good, guys. Like, I don't need the, the beer. I don't need the cocktail, you know? What I do is I do coffee because I freaking love coffee. Okay, <laughs> so you want to uh, meet for coffee? Let's meet for coffee and let's talk mm-hmm. like normal people. What are some other good like examples like coffee? Where else is like a good place to meet? For me, it's coffee or doing something that I like to do. So like this would have to be a, not the first meeting, but yeah. the second, like go for a run, run. go for a, a bike ride, right? Is golfing go for, good too? It's great. I just don't, I yeah. suck at golf. So I play squash. I'm trying to get into paddle because I'm here in Miami. There's no, you know, squash is not a thing. Tennis. I heard tennis down here is. Tennis is a thing. Okay. Mark my words. You're about to see. You're about to do. Yeah. Pump up these skills in in this, in secret. No one's even to know. And then I'm going to be like, yo, guys want to play some tennis? I'm going to be freaking crushing it. Um, Because it is a great, it is a great way. So by the way, we talk about influence, dopamine reactions to alcohol food. You know what else is a great influence, but it's healthy is exercise for both people mm, working out working out so hey um playing tennis you get you start to get your body moving it's like oh and it's fun it's fun and it, and, it, and you're building something and you wake up in the morning and you feel better than when you started do you have a story of like the best connection you've made from alcohol because of alcohol i've met several billionaires and several children of billionaires in this alcohol environment but none of these relationships count like they just don't last. They don't count. I told this funny story. I was in um, Austin, and I was out with my brother, and we w- we went to the elevator at this at this hotel, and uh, this guy just put his hand in the door, and it's late, and he just gets in the elevator. He's wearing this nice suit, and he just is looking at me. I'm like, oh, here we go. And What's he's up, just bro? like, are you Nicholas Crown? I was like, yeah. He's like, I'm a huge fan. I was like, cool, man. He's like, and I'm a billionaire. And I'm like... All right, come on. Tell me what you, you know, tell me your story. He told me his whole story. I would completely give it away if I told you more details here, but high tech, like Star Wars level technology. And I just got to hang out with this guy. And I can assure you, if this guy didn't have a few cocktails, he wouldn't be, you know, 
trying to kill himself by getting stuck in the elevator when it's about to, <laughs> to go up, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. It's all statistics, right? Yeah, there's going to be some scenarios where, where you do meet some great people. But it, over the long run, they're not. Like show me the good quality relationships versus the ones that you met with a freaking clear head mm-hmm. or it's just or there's just some commonality like i feel like if you're drink if you're drinking what you're doing is you're lowering the bar mm-hmm. it's like i used to live in new orleans okay like, okay so let's just say that that city at in its current in its undercurrent is driven by alcohol it's, it's almost like an alcoholic city in a sense okay in new orleans it's not uncommon to like you will find commonalities that don't exist when you're drinking mm-hmm. everyone's your friend it's not yeah. real has there ever been like a, an experience that you walked in on that was like amazing um, because you were drunk or whatever? You're drinking with one of your friends and your friends is like, oh, let's go over here because blah, blah, blah is here. Something like in along those lines. And you went to this event or wherever it was and you just had a great time or something good happened, whatever, in that sense. I've overstayed my welcome <laughs> at a lot of things like this is, again, where you you fail to recognize how long you should be hanging yeah, out in the DJ manners. booth with the famous DJ. Mm-hmm. It, are you annoying the famous DJ by doing some bad dance moves, you know, <laughs> to his to stage right? You know, like yeah. it's when you really break down these stories, it, it, there's always good stories. Mm-hmm. But you start to say, well, how good are they? Are they really that good? Because in a, in a clear head, in a clear day, in a clear morning, I'm up, right? It's like, what am I most proud of? I'm most proud of the things that I can lean on that are fucking stable. Mm-hmm. What did I build? Who are the people around me? You know, are the systems that I built working? Like, that's what I'm proud of. Also, that's the stuff that feeds you. That's the stuff that puts gas or electric in your <laughs> EV. Like, yeah. that's the thing that charges your Tesla. You know, getting bombed with r- randos on the weekends is not powering up your mm-hmm. fucking... Exactly. car or your wallet or your brain right yeah. so i agree have you ever had like a negative experience um that like impacted maybe your reputation or, or something along the lines i like to irish exit occasionally so it, usually you like to say usually you should say goodbye to people sometimes mm-hmm. i just leave yeah, so i, I do don't that think too. i do that too. i don't think that that's a good yeah. thing you know um What's what's happening now is as I is you know I build more and more of a reputation online. People expect me to act in a certain way. Mm-hmm. So if I don't act in that way, they look at you different. It creates friction, yeah. and it's it's just not a good look. I I don't want to be out out there behaving poorly or like not living up to my, you know, to the pillars that I'm trying to build here. Like, dude, that sucks. Mm-hmm. So it's just another reason to like yeah. keep stay focused and 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 make be- better choices so give yourself even if you don't you w- whatever you're you don't have the reputation yet give yourself a reputation to live up to make yourself proud live up to that vision of yourself because before i started posting on social media before i started doing all this stuff before i started organizing my thoughts right Th- there was no character there was no rich guy there was no really rich guy there was just me right yeah. now that i've created these characters and i've created this personality it's like it gives me something really clear to live up to and i don't want to fucking let myself down and i don't want to let everyone else down you know who who's who's benefiting from some of this stuff whether it's the skits whether it's the podcast whether it's the newsletter whatever it is like you know p- people say when they have kids i don't have kids like when you have kids you, you live for someone other than yourself you become a lot less selfish same things happening right now you know if i don't turn up to 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 drop the podcast if i don't turn up to drop the newsletter dude there's hundreds of thousands of people who are like well he Where's didn't deliver that? yeah and that makes you be a better person so creating that vision for yourself, whether you have it right now or you're going to have it in a couple months, I think it just gives you another reason to, to dial in, mm-hmm. you know, dial in your January. Exactly. Or if you didn't get started, dial in your February. It doesn't matter when it's January, February, yeah. every, what everyone's doing, it doesn't matter. Same thing around the holidays. I mean, the holidays is a terrible, is, is really a, I think the holidays is one of the biggest stress times in America. I think more people su- suffer from stress during the holidays than any other time of the year. Why? Alcohol, financial pressure, family pressure, you're spending too much money, you're drinking too much, and you're hanging out with people that you haven't seen in 365 days, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, what could be more sh- yeah. terrifying? And and certainly, certainly the alcohol is one thing that you just pull that out and the whole, pu- the whole thing gets a little bit mm-hmm. easier to manage. You're like, I'm not really that fired up, Grandpa, about what you just said, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, about whatever. 
you know, exactly. about Andrew Tate's extradition. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know you watched TikTok, Grandpa. <laughs> Do you think like it's all it's all just a fallacy, like miscon? It's like a, a construct that's not even real, like the holidays, all these things. All of this stuff isn't real. Exactly. Nothing's real. It's Every- a, com- a communal dream. Exactly. So uh, communal dreams, like the holidays, like Valentine's Day, like these, these, these invented yeah. ho- holidays. Well, no, Halloween's awesome. Let's not. <laughs> let's, we're not. One thing we're not going to do on the Really Rich Podcast is hate on Halloween. Totally awesome <laughs> That's holiday. Your favorite holiday. It's amazing. It makes no <laughs> sense. This is just it's absurd. You can just yeah, it's a it's fantastic. Uh shout out to Halloween. Yeah, like all of this stuff is a group dream and you don't have to subscribe to it. So, I have a really like family's important, you know, my family feels that family's important. So, me being there the whole time for a lot of these holidays is is in high demand mm-hmm. from my family. I can't do it the way that I used to do it when I was younger. I can't do the two day, three day Halloween, you know, Italian yeah. Christmas where you're like, I eat 89,000 calories and I'm 4% tir- tiramisu. You're like, what the hell is going on? Right. I just can't do that anymore. And, and for me, it's like, you have to cut the cord a little bit to the, to this, to this dream. And, you know, for me, I'm not cutting the cord cause I'm like, I don't want to hang out with my family or I'm a, f- a fucking jerk or something. I'm yeah. like, I can't. Like I was running three sponsored posts um, at the end of the year. Each one of those posts takes an entire day to create. It's like, when am I supposed to yeah. kick it? So for me, I was just like, well, my holiday, Nicholas Crown's holiday, isn't this week. It's the it's the first week of January, and the, and that well, it was supposed to be <laughs> it was supposed to be chill. I'm supposed to tell everyone like, and then I officially chilled. It's like <laughs> no, I ch- I chilled for like 48 hours. Okay, yeah. I posted a few stories. You saw me in a tux. You know, drinking Pedialyte, like, yeah. gave you an insight yeah. into what's going on exactly. here. And, uh, yeah, back to work for me. But th- this is the state that I like to be in. Um, and that's great. And, like, the thing is, like, you're very responsible and, like, a lot of people aren't. But do you ever get frowned upon by, like, friends, family, and, like, a lot of other people, like, people that you're close to that you actually respect and you love, whatever. Do you ever get frowned? Yeah. All the time? Who, who wants to hear no? Yeah. No one wants to hear no. Like, no one wants to hear, no, I can't go, or I don't want to go, or no, just Mm -hmm. no, whatever. Like, you don't even need a reason half the time. It's just, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Look, I live in Miami Beach. Who doesn't want to come and visit Miami Beach? You know what the answer to that question is? No. I might as well live on the top of the Bellagio in Vegas. Like, (laughs) you know, hey guys, every single weekend isn't the hangover part two. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I live here. So this is, you have to say no, and you just have to get over it. <laughs> you have to disappoint some people to, to move yeah. in your direction mm-hmm. because people like you getting on their program a little bit, you know, Hey, I'm off of work. I've got jack shit to do. Come on, Andrew, come over to my program, you know? Yeah. And I don't, I recognize when that's happening. I could feel the tug and I just say, I'm good. I'm out. When you're growing up, especially probably you too. Did you you started drinking before you turned twenty one? I would ass- everyone has. Uh, are you a cop? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you ask if you're a cop, you have to say no or it's entrapment. That's what I read <laughs> when I was in high school. <laughs> um, officer, like, officer Andrew, officer um, slash producer Andrew Rumble. Everybody, <laughs> you're arrested. <laughs> oh, you're going to jail. With me. Yeah. Okay. So wait, I'll let you finish. Okay. So, I would say about like maybe 80 percent of people in the U S. have definitely consumed alcohol before they've turned 21 and maybe that's what turns them makes them flip the switch it becomes uh, this alcoholic in their early years of like life like when life starts to get serious do you think that maybe more people would be more motivated more disciplined if the age was lowered to 18 if drinking was lowered to 18 we would have so much less problems in the united states because if if you go overseas and you look at the way that people drink, they don't drink the way that we do here. Mm-hmm. Like in Italy, you don't need to steal the bottle of wine from Pino. Hey, you wait. know, young Pino is like, <laughs> he's like, I'm good. Like, this is just, I have a glass and that's it. Um, it's, it's one of those things where you tell someone they can't do it and they want to do it more. Yeah. Okay. Because the only people, well, I don't even know what's legal and what's not in Amsterdam anymore, <laughs> anymore. But the people that are abusing everything in Amsterdam, they're not the Dutch. They're goddamn Americans, you know? 
At least they, it was when yeah. I was there. Here's, here's the deal. The final word is, if you don't have a lot of money yeah. in your pocket, and you want a lot of money in your pocket, does check, okay, check, that's me. I don't have a lot of money, and I want a lot of money. And you're going out drinking. Stop doing that mm-hmm. and see what happens to your motivation, to your relationships, to your awareness of yourself. You might find yourself playing this little experiment. You watch the podcast. You play this experiment, and you go, I hate this job. I hate what I'm doing, and I'm really good at this, and I'm going to try that. And you know what? In 30 or 60 days, I might have a little success at that. All because you took some time to listen to yourself and to take a break, Mm -hmm. you know? So the choice is yours, okay? But if you are looking for a hack, because we're all looking for hacks. We're on YouTube. This is YouTube. (laughs) You're looking for a hack. This is the number one hack to getting what you want, is to get a higher level of energy, is to get a a better insight into yourself, taking, taking care of your body, dude. So happy dry January, everyone. You know, I hope you progress. I hope you see clearer. I hope you cut the bad shit and you do more of the good shit. And I commend you. Make 2023 your year. Make 2023 your year. That's a pod. All right. Hope you enjoy it. A lot more of these to come. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We've got a ton of awesome content in store for you. There's going to be a lot more of these to come. See you soon.